What's up? This is Jeremy's Test Kitchen, and in this episode, we're going to be making bare bed fish and chips with a fresh side of coleslaw and as well as tartar sauce. The ingredients are listed in the description box down below. Follow along in this video for directions, and if you're not a member to this channel, go ahead and tap that red subscribe button down below to help this channel grow. Awesome! Let's get started! Okay, let's begin by preheating our fry later to 300 degrees Fahrenheit so we can blanch our potato fries. While we wait for that, let's work on our coleslaw so we can marinate and refrigerate for at least 30 to 45 minutes. Start by cutting one half of green and red cabbage and then save the other half for another time. Then cut these halves again in half and then turn it 90 degrees and start slicing them as thin as you can get it. You could use a cheese grater to get small pieces, but for me, I like it to be like a salad. Okay, once you have achieved this step, go ahead and put it into a large mixing bowl and set it aside for a moment. Now let's cut up five to six carrots into julienne pieces, like this. And then add them to the mixing bowl. Reminder, like I said earlier, you can use a cheese grater if you prefer. I prefer the knife, a chef's knife to be exact, one knife does it all. Less tools used means less to clean up, if you know what I mean. Okay, now let's mix it up a little by putting another mixing bowl on top of this mixing bowl and shake the hell out of it. Just like this. Okay, now to flavor it with our wet and dry ingredients. Salt and sugar to taste. Roughly I'm putting one tablespoon of salt and a quarter cup of sugar, followed by a quarter cup of white distilled vinegar and two cups of mayonnaise. Mix thoroughly and then cover it and refrigerate it for roughly 30 to 45 minutes to allow it to marinate and chill. Time to make the fries. Okay, I have here two big Idaho potatoes that I'm cutting into quarter inch julienne pieces like this so we can begin to blanch them before frying them to perfection. Remember, the fryer needs to be at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for blanching. Okay, I can only fit one potato's worth in my fryer layer basket for this process. The process of blanching fries takes five minutes, no less and no more. Use a timer. Once the five minutes is up, take them out, rest them on a sheet pan lined with parchment paper to cool down. Then we will fry them to perfection after we fry our fish. Once you are done with this process, turn your temperature to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Ideal temperatures for frying. Okay, let's work on our beer batter. Start with two to three cups of all-purpose flour. Then mix in two to three cups of pale ale beer, or your choice of beer, doesn't matter. The mixture should be thick, but not too thick. Add a half a teaspoon of baking powder to the mix, and that's it. Set up a side dish of dry all-purpose flour to dust your fish before dipping them into the wet batter. This will allow the batter to really stick nicely to the fish. Okay, go ahead and cut your fish up to the desired size that you like, and then dust them with the all-purpose flour and then put them into the beer batter. Now, before putting them into the fry letter, go ahead and drop your fry basket into the oil. We need to slowly submerge the fish into the oil to prevent the batter from getting stuck into the basket. Okay, fish are in and cooking, or should I say, frying. How we tell it's done when it's done is the fish will float to the surface and become golden brown to its color and crust. Okay, we're done with this process. Set them aside and it's time to work on our french fries. Also, same thing here. We are looking for the color of golden brown with these french fries. Okay, just like this. Should look like this. Perfect. Okay, drop them into a mixing bowl and then dust them with some fine sea salt. And that's it. Let's move on to the next subject, which is tartar sauce. Okay, 
This version of tartar sauce is my version. I like to bump it up a little bit in flavor profile. So all it takes is two cups of mayonnaise, four to five little sweet Kirkins pickles. I like the sweet ones opposed to the dill ones just because, you know, it gives it a nice enhancement flavor with adding that sweet appeal in there. And then also flavor it with some fresh dill and one clove of minced garlic. And then go ahead and mix it up and that's it. You're ready to plate it up and enjoy. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, you know what to do. Tap that like button down below. And if you have any questions, leave your comments down below. Your engagement helps this channel grow. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already for future updates. Until next time, peace, love, and grease. This is Jeremy's Test Kitchen, signing out.